Hello my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a tumultuous, anxious, crazy time in everybody's life right now. So I figured I would highlight some cases of compassion in the criminal justice system to keep us all smiling and to give us hope and to just highlight some positivity when we all need some. So if you're interested in this really cool case about how a judge sentenced a man to jail and then did his time with him, yes, did his time with him, the whole entire time with him, please keep watching. That is not clickbait, by the way. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I will pop a link to it right up there. I use my years of experience to help prison wives and family members. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here. Frankly, the whole entire thing sucks, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful, hopefully one-shot deal. Please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. It helps me so much in YouTube. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you stumbled on my channel in this video. Hit that subscribe button right there below and ring that notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we do go live here and there in between. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into this story. This story takes place in Fayetteville, North Carolina, in a judge's courtroom. His name was Judge Lou Oliveira, and there was a man who appeared in front of Judge Oliveira repetitively. His name was Joe Cerna. I have little boy handwriting, and it looks like John Cena. I swear I need to go to handwriting school. A few years ago, Joe Cerna was arrested for drunk driving. As part of his probation, he wasn't allowed to drink. So when he lied about a recent urine test, the judge felt he had no choice. I gave Joe a night in jail because he had to be held accountable. Inside the county courthouse in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Judge Lou Oliveira made headlines with an unusual decision. You may be seated. Joe had been a sergeant in the army for many years. He did three tours in Afghanistan and he had seen some horrific stuff. He survived a suicide bomber. He survived all different kinds of military things. Retired Army Sergeant First Class Joe Cerna did three tours in Afghanistan and has two Purple Hearts to show for it. The Green Beret survived an IED and a suicide bomber. But he says his scariest moment was the night he was riding in a truck with three other soldiers. But the worst thing that happened to him in one of the tours in Afghanistan was that him and three other men were in a truck. What happened? We were, we were following the, the creek and uh, the road gave way. And um, the vehicle went into the creek. The truck started filling with water. Yeah. All hope was lost. The truck was stuck. It started filling up with water and they couldn't get out of the truck. They were trapped in there. So as the truck is filling up, the water was getting higher and higher and higher in this truck. It went up to his chest and he just remembers thinking, that's it, this is how I'm going out. I'm gonna die in here. And then the water reached his neck, his chin, and finally somehow it stopped when it had reached the height of his chin. And he got out of the car and he has serious, serious PTSD from this. In order to cope and to escape the memories of that traumatic experience along with all of the other traumas of being in the army, in Afghanistan, at war for so many years, he developed a drinking problem and a serious fear of small confined spaces. He did wind up having a lot of legal issues surrounding his drinking. He got some DUIs, he went to court. He wound up appearing in Judge Oliveira's courtroom over and over and over again. So here he had a DUI and he was on probation and he appeared in court and he was asked if he drank and he lied and said no. So at this point, the judge said it had been so many times, I knew that I needed to sentence him, but my heart broke for him because of everything that he's been through but he needed accountability for his drinking. That's how he, first of all, he broke the law. He needed to be responsible for it, but also he needed a wake up call. If you're driving and you're intoxicated and you're intoxicated all the time, that's very dangerous. He could get behind the wheel and he can hurt or kill somebody or himself. So the judge said he had no other choice. He sentenced him to one day in jail, which he knew would be crushing 
for Joe because of all of his traumas, because of his PTSD and the specific PTSD related to small confined spaces, which brings him right back to being in that truck drowning. And the only person, by the way, that survived out of the four guys in the truck that day, Joe was the only person that survived. So that- How many guys got out of that truck? Alive? Yeah. Just me. I was a sole survivor. Joe says it still haunts him. So I suffer from PTSD. Among his issues, a fear of being in small, cramped places. So that also led to a lot of the drinking issues. He had survivor guilt on top of everything else and watching those guys drown and not being able to help them because he's stuck. So the judge said, I have to send you to jail. The judge felt he had no choice. I gave Joe a night in jail because he had to be held accountable. But I will not make you go alone because I know how traumatic that'll be for you and you don't deserve that. It was just one night. But as he entered the cell, Joe says he knew it would be one of the longest nights of his life. When I walked into the jail cell and they closed the door behind me, I started feeling this um, anxiety. It came back? It came back, a flashback. So they both went to the Fayetteville jail. They were cellmates overnight. They were joking that they ate meatloaf and they talked and they learned about each other's families. And when they asked Joe about this afterwards, he said, because the judge was talking to him and he kept just telling him stories and listening to him tell his own stories, he said, he brought me back to North Carolina from Afghanistan. And the more we talked, the further apart the walls got. We ate meatloaf and uh, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about our families. And the walls got further apart. The walls just got, they, they, they didn't exist anymore. He brought me back to North Carolina from being in a truck in Afghanistan. And this story is so beautiful because they asked the judge later, like, why would you send yourself to jail? Why would you go to jail with this guy that's been in your courtroom over and over and over again? He just keeps breaking the law. And he said, sometimes what somebody needs is not jail. Sometimes what they need is compassion. He said, and I have no problem exercising human compassion to help somebody that appears in front of me in my courtroom. That meant so much to me, sir. I mean, this week, Joe promised the judge no more mess ups. I don't want to let you down, ever. It's not how law and order usually works. But sometimes jail is not what a man needs. Sometimes the best sentence love you. I love you, is compassion. Thank you, breathe me. No. It's not about punishment. It's to help a person straighten out their life. And if Joe kept going and he didn't, you know, maybe he would go to jail alone and have so much trauma that he had the minute he got out of that day of jail, he headed right to the liquor store, drank a bottle of vodka, got in the car and hurt somebody. And then he would go to prison for probably the rest of his life. And there would be no hope for a man who just needed help. He didn't need prison. So that's the beauty of a compassionate judge. There are judges who have literally helped to take somebody's life because of the sentence they imposed. I told a story not too long ago about a little boy named Brandon who found out his girlfriend was cheating on him, got drunk one night at McDonald's, drove into an armory. The judge got pissed off because his bridge game was canceled that night, sentenced that kid to United States Penitentiary where he learned how to be a really tough criminal and then in and out of prison and lost his life within four years. I'll link that story above there. It's heart-wrenching, but unfortunately, judges have most judges, I should say. Most judges, unless there's mandatory minimum sentencing involved, like what happened with Adam and so many other people that have longer than life drug sentences and that kind of a thing, but the judges that have their discretion and can use it to help an inmate and can express compassion, I will be eternally grateful for. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys. Love you. I love you. Is compassion. Thank you for breathing me. No.